How many of you would like to feel in 30 days way better than you feel right now today? How many of you would like to be like a whole lot lighter than you are right now today? Right. So typically what happens is every year we, we tend to gain about a pound per year on average. So in, in about 20 years, what the research shows us is that we will gain about 17 pounds, okay? So that's equivalent to gaining weight of eating like one, one uh, Snickers, one little fun size Snickers every single day. So the good news is that we can actually stop that and not just stop ourselves from getting worse, but we can actually uh, revert back. So we can get, get healthier, we can lose weight, we can do, um, you know, in, in 30 days, be massively different than we are right now, okay? So um, I want to just kind of go over some, some kind of background information with you guys right now. So uh, you can see that the United States, we spend more money on healthcare than any other industrialized nation in the world. And out of the top 37 industrialized nations in the world, guess where we rank as far as our healthcare system? Out of the top 37, we come in 37, okay? We come in dead last. So there's a study done by, um, by this, this uh, organization in 2013, and they looked at these nine benchmark areas, and it includes things like infant mortality, um, prevalence of HIV and AIDS, lung disease, heart disease, all of these different things, and you'll notice that the United States came in dead last um, in each one of those, okay? So what we're doing right now really is not working. Basically, healthcare um, consists of two things, really, okay? So if you get sick and you, you use healthcare, you go to the doctor, what are the two things that you might get? What's the, what's the first thing you think you're gonna get? Prescription. You're gonna get a prescription, right? So do we take a lot of prescriptions or a little bit of prescription in the United States? A whole lot. We take a whole lot, okay? So in North America, there are 34 million people. On an annual basis, we consume four billion prescriptions. That means that it's 12 prescriptions for every person. And I'm sure some of you probably are like myself that don't consume any, so that means that somewhere, somebody else is making up that difference. And again, you look at the, the, the statistics, if this was working, we would be the healthiest nation on the planet, right? But clearly, clearly it's not working, okay, all right? So we need to do something different. Um, looking at obesity, so the SAD reality, we call it SAD, S-A-D, because that's also an acronym for the standard North American diet, which is, a, which is actually a pretty SAD diet to have. Uh, the, the reality is, is that 68.5 of adults are, are overweight or obese, okay? Over 30% of us are classified as, as obese, which is a disease condition. You can see it's one billion worldwide. Um, since 1980, since the time that I was born, obesity prevalence has tripled, okay? So in, in the last three decades, it's tripled. Um, obesity is linked to all types of other diseases, things like heart disease, um, you know, it increases prevalence and risk of breast cancer in women. Um, there's strokes, you know, there's a lot of different ones out there. And then if you look at the cost of it, all right? So we know that it's gonna actually save you money to be healthier, right? And it's not just saving you money, but it's improving your life in so many areas. You know, the way you feel, your productivity at work, your, your ability to play with your kids at home. You know, all those things are affected by, by your weight. But just looking at the pocketbook, the, the medical costs associated with obesity in 2008 were $147 billion. So compared to a person that's not obese, people that are obese spend on average $1,400 extra dollars per year on healthcare costs. So that's $1,400 a year that could go into your savings, into your retirement account, you know, on a vacation, whatever it is. Again, looking at, looking at the statistics, where do we rank as far as the rest of the world, as far as obesity is concerned, we rank number one in the world. So we are the most obese country on the planet. And you can see 35.9% of us are obese. So this, this study is from 2012. Just today, I looked up the most recent statistics uh, because I had heard, I think last year, that it was Mexico who was actually more obese than what we are. Uh, but the most recent statistics are this. So back, we are back Number one in 2014 is the most obese country in the world. Looking at where our state right now, Missouri ranks for the rest of the United States, we're in the top 12 obese, obese states um, in the United States. So we're not in a very good environment, so we need to definitely do some things different, okay? And the good news is that I am going to give you the tools that you need to make the changes so that you don't have to be one of the statistics that we talked about.
So the good news is that we have something that's radically different from many other weight loss programs out there. There's all kinds of stuff. You know, there's Jenny Craig, there's Weight Watchers, there's South Beach Diet. I mean, there's all these things that I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard. Maybe some of you have tried it. And um, for those of you who have tried like those temporary diet programs, what happens to that weight that you normally lose? You put it back on. And not only do you put it back on, but the research actually shows us that you tend to gain more weight after dieting than what you lose. So looking at that, research actually says that dieting makes you not lose weight. It says that dieting makes you gain weight. So we, we want to do something uh, drastically different. The programs that we have have like this, this secret key to it, and it's hormones, all right? Um, so the, the, that's, that's the biggest difference with what we do. How many of you have you know, tried to eat really healthy? Maybe you go to the gym, maybe you're, you're eating out at lunch and you're eating a salad and your friends are eating cheeseburgers and fries, but you're the one that's, that's not losing weight. Does that ever happen to any of us? If that is you, it's not, it's not a matter of nutrition, right? Because you're eating better. It may not be a matter of even exercise. It's most likely a matter of hormones because if our hormones are out of whack, our body's not going to burn fat properly. So I wanna talk about hormones. There's three specific hormones that are gonna have a huge impact on your body mass index, on, on, on uh, your, your state of obesity, or whether you're healthy or not. The number one is insulin, all right? So everybody's heard of insulin, correct? Right. So what insulin does is it goes out into the blood and it pulls sugar out of the bloodstream because we probably all know that if we have too much sugar in our bloodstream, we can go into a coma, some really bad things can happen to us. So the body signals the pancreas to release insulin, insulin goes out and it grabs the sugar. If we cannot use that sugar, guess what insulin does with it? It stores it, right? And what do you think it stores that sugar at? It stores it as fat, that's exactly right. So the sugar can be used as fuel, right? If we're, if we're working out, you know, we're burning that energy, we're gonna use it, the insulin's gonna take it to our muscles, but if we don't, it's gonna take it and it's gonna store it as fat, all right? So the good news is that the body has some built-in some built in systems with hormones. And what actually happens, fat releases a, a hormone or a chemical messenger called leptin, okay? And what leptin does is it tells the brain to burn fat. So we get a bunch of fat in our body. This hormone leptin gets released from the fat. It goes up to our brain and it tells the brain, turn on fat burn, okay? What do you think would happen if we have too much fat and that fat is always screaming at the brain, burn more fat, burn more fat, burn more fat, just like if you were little and your mom's yelling at you to clean your room, clean your room, clean your room, what do you eventually do? You ignore them, right, or you tune it out. That's the same thing that happens with diabetes. If we get too much sugar, what happens is, is the insulin may still be working, but the receptors burn out. They start to ignore it because it's constantly on. It, it, it's telling, it's telling the, the pancreas to create more insulin, to create more insulin, to create more insulin too much, and then eventually it, it wears out or it burns out. The same thing with leptin. Now, what happens is that our brain is not effectively telling our body to burn fat, okay? And then because we're still eating too much sugar, that sugar is turning into fat. And, it, and it's just this cascade, it's like this, this negative spiral uh, effect that happens. So now because we're fat, and now probably because we're, we're overweight and we don't feel good and, and we're really tired, maybe we're not <laughs> sleeping well, there's another chemical messenger that comes in here that now gets stimulated called, called ghrelin, the, the hunger hormone. So this one affects your appetite. So actually what happens, the more weight that we have and, and the more we have these, these other hormone problems with insulin and leptin, then we actually get our appetite stimulated even more by ghrelin, which makes us just eat more. And again, it's just this big, horrible, negative cascade. So we really have to break it. There are some good hormones with fat that we want to, or with uh, weight loss or, or fat that we want to teach you about as well that come into with, to play with exercise. So one of them is called cortisol. Who's heard of cortisol before? Cortisol is a stress hormone. What cortisol does is it actually makes your body store <coughs> fat, okay? Because whenever our body's in a stressful state, a stressful situation, our primitive instinct is to, is to uh, survival mode, right? We, we wanna save, so we're saving everything that we have, we're storing it, okay? That's what cortisol does. But if we exercise properly, our body will actually secrete two hormones, one of which is called growth hormone, human growth hormone, um, which is like, you know, hormones that some of the, the athletes were injecting to improve their performance. 
for their, their muscle mass, and then one of them is testosterone. So both of these are anabolic hormones that help your body to build more lean muscle mass. Um, they help you with all types of things, including even your libido. You know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, benefits to getting your hormones in, into play properly. So the goal here is to help you guys. How many of you would would actually be super stoked to lose 20 pounds in 30 days? How many of you are actually willing to try it? Okay, so we've got some hands in the room. So the, that is the goal, to lose 20 pounds in 30 days, and this is perfect timing. Uh, Amanda and I kind of were able to fit this right at a time where I actually have another challenge going on in my office. So we have a bunch of follow-up events. We've got a grocery shopping tour set up that you guys can come to. We're going to talk about reading labels and you know what things to put in your grocery basket and what not to. We've got another event coming up in a couple weeks where we're going to do a... Uh, it's like a potluck style dinner where you get to try all of these different recipes. It's called recipe night. We're going to talk about uh, grilling and, and kind of summer barbecue theme kind of food, but from a healthy perspective. So we've got a lot of support events for you guys. So if you want to do this, uh, it's definitely feasible. And the more the, of those events that you come to, you know, it's going to help to keep you accountable quite a bit more. So we will teach you the science. But how many of you think that it's absolutely absurd? That there's, that there's no way possible that you could lose 20 pounds in 30 days. And it's okay. <laughs> so I, I, got, I got a couple of hands up. Um, I, used, I used to think that as well um, until I started actually doing this stuff. And now we do a challenge every year in our office. So usually about February, because February is the time where everybody already has fallen off the wagon from their, their New Year's resolution. <laughs> so about February, we start our weight loss challenge. And every year we have somebody that's losing 20 pounds, which is incredible. So this guy, uh, he's actually uh, one of the chefs at um, Jack Bucks downtown. He's been a patient of mine for years. Oh, not sure what happened there. There it is. So he's been a patient of mine for years. You can see he lost 38 pounds. That was over about the course of a year. That one is for some reason playing automatically. Uh, his triglycerides went down from 555 to 165. His cholesterol dropped from 240 to 173 without any medication. And his blood pressure dropped from 145 over 91 to 128 over 75. So this is, this is a patient of mine. That woman right there, I just adjusted her this afternoon, uh, probably about an hour ago. So um, I've seen it with my... I apologize. I don't know which way I'm going. I've seen it with my own eyes. Uh, this past February in our challenge, I, I was really trying to get her to record a video for you guys because she's just done incredible, but my patient's name is Chris, and we did this 20 pounds in 30 days weight loss challenge, and in 30 days, she didn't lose 20 pounds, she lost 16 pounds, but she came really close. So within the next couple months after that, she's lost 24 pounds um, total in about three months. Uh, she finally started wearing those clothes that were in the back of her closet, some of them still had tags on, uh, that she bought and, and was never able to wear. She has four kids and she is only like two pounds away from her pre-baby weight. And her oldest kid's like eight years old. So uh, I've seen it with my own eyes. So I just want to encourage you, it definitely can happen. Uh, but the thing is, is most of you know that you should eat, you know, maybe uh, an egg and not a donut for breakfast, right? Most of you know that maybe you should eat a salad and not a cheeseburger for lunch. So the question is why? You know, if you, if you know what to do and you know how to exercise, why do you not do it? Tempting. <laughs> and it's tempting, but the, the thing is, is that um, we, don't, we don't have a big enough reason, right? If we had a big enough reason, we would, we would do it, okay? So for me, the reason why, you know, I will choose to eat healthier things or why I will go and work out in the morning versus, you know, hitting snooze or not working out is because I have kids. You know, and right now I know that like a third of our kids are obese, right? I know that we have little kids on blood pressure medications and statin medications. Um, you know, asthma, allergies, autism, all these things are going through the roof. So I know that if I'm not healthy, if I don't lead by example, my kids probably won't be healthy. If I'm not healthy and don't lead by example, my patients won't be healthy. So the thing is, is you really have to, this is the number one thing, is that you have to grasp a reason why. Because if you just want to look good in a swimming suit for the summer, that's not a very good reason. More likely what's going to happen than you losing weight is you're going to stay inside and you're going to miss all the pool parties and hanging out with your friends. But if your reason is bigger, if it's because you want to improve your life, 
or you want to save save money, or you want to do it for somebody else, you want to set a good example for your kids or your family or something like that, then the chances are is that you're gonna you're gonna stick to this plan a lot more, um, especially even if you tie it to your your faith. You know, if you look at things that like the people who say that the, the your body is the temple, right? I mean that that is a great reason right there to stay healthy. So here are the keys. Uh, you guys feel free to take notes on any of this stuff. I do have, we do have some handouts on here, and I will recommend some resources uh, for you afterwards. But if you want to take any notes, definitely uh, go ahead and take it on this. There are five keys to this plan as far as nutrition is concerned. All right, and these are absolutely essential. These eating this way with these five keys are going to help to nip that hormone problem that starts with insulin right in the butt. All right. So the first one is that we want to eliminate sugar. Okay. Because like I said, when we get too much sugar in the body, it's constantly yelling at the pancreas, we need more insulin, we need more insulin, we need more insulin. So if we stop consuming sugar, what happens is it stops doing that and then our hormones get a chance to reset, our receptors uh, are cleansed and our body starts working and get it back on track. So we want to get rid of all sugar, but not just do we want to get rid of sugar, we want to get rid of the things that turn into sugar rapidly in our body as well. And what that means is grains, okay? So we also want to get rid of grains. So white bread, white rice, white pasta, those types of things, we want to get rid of them because basically what happens, as soon as they go into your mouth, there's an enzyme in your saliva that starts breaking them down into glucose, which is sugar, right? So we want to stay away from that. We also want to stay away from foods, especially processed foods that have an added sugar, okay? So even you would be shocked if you start reading some labels of the ingredients that are, that are in things. I mean, everything from you know, coffee creamer, to uh, ketchup, to mayonnaise. I mean, even there's canned beans and canned vegetables in the grocery store that have sugar added into them. So it's very, very important that when you're shopping, you actually read the ingredients in the foods that, are you, that you're buying. And if it has sugar in there, you want, it, you want to get rid of it. You want to put it back and find, find a substitute that doesn't have sugar. So we talked about grains. Fats, the thing is, is that we actually want to increase fat intake all right we want more fat in our body but we want good fat so there's definitely a difference between good fat and bad fat all right do most of you know that already hopefully so so we'll talk about that again a little bit more in a minute <clears throat> we also want to eat while we're doing this for the 30 days this is actually it's 20 days four weeks we want to eat very little fruit all right fruit is good for us it has a lot of you know vitamins and enzymes and, and, and things that are, that are good for us. However, there are a lot of fruits, especially things like banana, um, pineapple, the, the red, like golden delicious apples, you know, those juicy, really sweet ones. You can taste the sugar in it, right? So even though fruit is good for us, right, because of this sugar, it's going to interrupt this, this hormone cleansing response in our body. So we want to stick to berries, the reason why we want berries is because berries are low glycemic index, so they don't spike our blood sugar like those other fruits. And then Granny Smith apples, the green apples, those are the ones that don't taste super sweet. All right? And it's best still to consume those things in the morning at least before 3 o'clock in the afternoon because even though they're low glycemic index, they still will spike your blood sugar a little bit. And then the last piece is toxins. So there are a lot of toxins in our food. Again, if you start reading labels, um, you will see all types of additives, you know, these big, long, chemical-looking names. You'll see um, things like artificial sweeteners. Uh, you will see uh, artificial colorings. You'll see preservatives, nitrates, MSG. I'm sure you guys have heard of some of those things. A lot of those are actually neurotoxins to our body. So uh, we want to make sure that we're avoiding the toxins as well. So the one key that you need to take away from this is, besides these, these five points, is to read your labels, all right? When you go grocery shopping, read the ingredients. Do not just pay attention to the amount of calories or the, the, the number of grams of sugar or protein, that kind of stuff. That doesn't matter. You have to read the ingredients. So fat really has a bad rap. You know, if you go to the grocery store, you're gonna see tons of low fat and no fat stuff all over the place, right? Everything from milk to yogurt to cheese, you know, uh, even like crackers and cookies, you know, everywhere you look, there's, there's low fat, no fat stuff. And it wasn't always like this, but in like the 60s and 70s era, um, it, it came out that we were going to start getting rid of fat because fat has more calories per gram than do carbohydrates or sugar. 
So we said, hey, we want, we want to lose some weight, let's cut off fat. And then there was also some studies that talked about animal products and fat from animal products leading to heart disease. And some of those studies are very flawed, I'm not going to get into all of it right now. Uh, but basically fat got a bad rap. So all this bad press about fat, and then food manufacturers start cutting it out of their products, and we start consuming all of the low fat and no fat stuff, right? So instead of eating butter, we're now eating margarine. You know, we're, we're eating, drinking skim milk instead of regular milk. You know, you, you, you've seen those trends, uh, buying low fat crackers or cookies versus, versus the regular ones. And even though um, our consumption of these low fat and no fat things went up, when you look at what happened to our rates of heart disease and obesity since that time, guess what also went up? Those things did, right? So we're consuming less fat overall, yet rates of heart disease and obesity are still going up, all right? So it's not, it's not just all about the fat, okay? It's the, it's the quality of our fat, not the quantity of our fat that's gonna affect obesity and heart disease. So um, some of you have heard about trans fats being bad, yes? Okay, so trans fats are bad. So the good news is that in 2006, because we know trans fats are bad, the government actually regulated that food manufacturers list if they have trans fats in their, in their products that they're putting in a grocery store for you to buy. So that was good, that's kind of like a win. The bad news is that there was a loophole. So if there was less than 500 milligrams of trans fat per serving, they didn't have to list it. So if you look at something like this jar of Skippy peanut butter and they're all proudly saying right here that there's no trans fat, right? And then you, look, you turn it around and you look at the ingredients and then you see that there's hydrogenated vegetable oil and soybean oil in there, right? Which are actually trans fats. So they can, they can straight up tell you on the front of the product that there's no trans fats and you can turn around and read the label on the back and read the ingredients and see that there are trans fats. So you, you have to really be conscious. You have to really be aware and, and read those labels, especially the ingredients. Because basically what they do is they just, they decrease our serving size. You know, so I've used the example in the past, like a fortune cookie, that may say there's no trans fats in a fortune cookie, but your one fortune cookie is two servings, right? It, 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 it just doesn't make sense, because nobody, nobody's gonna save that for two servings, they're gonna eat it all at once. So these are the fats that we wanna get rid of. Um, if you wanna go home and make a, just make a change right now, just draw a line in the sand, if you go home and if you have these things in your house, just get rid of them. Like, like don't donate them to Goodwill or anything like that, like just put them in the trash, Go grocery shopping tomorrow and get some healthier alternatives. So the hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils, these are the ones that we want to get rid of. Cotton seed, soybean oil, vegetable oil, okay? They all have to be chemically extracted. Most of you know that vegetables aren't oily, right? Um, and then they're hydrogenated. They add hydrogen atoms to it basically to keep it stable at room temperature because if they didn't, it would, it would be rancid, okay? Um, looking at trans fats, margarine and synthetic butters, all right? Those are not heart healthy butters, um, they are heart sick butters. So we want to get rid of margarine, we want to actually eat real butter. Real butter is gonna be better for you. But again, um, it's, it's the quality that we have to look at, so we want to make sure that we're getting butter from healthy sources and not butter from like sick, sick animals or sick cows. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but again, rancid vegetable oil, some more examples are corn oil, um, canola oil, a lot of times people think that canola oil is a healthy oil. Uh, you'll even find canola oil at Whole Foods, right? And there was actually a big fuss about canola oil being, being found at Whole Foods because Whole Foods has this uh, policy that they don't carry any genetically modified organisms in, in the store, right? But they carry canola. And canola, there's no such thing as a canola plant. Canola comes from a plant called rapeseed, which is a genetically modified plant. So. Canola, the C-A-N stands for Canadian, and the OLA stands for um, canola oil, and then low acid is where that L-A comes from. So it comes from um, a genetically modified plant. So we want to stay away from that stuff as well. The fats that we want to increase in the diet are the ones that are not altered by man, okay? So, so the less hydrogenated and you know, uh, heated and all of those things, the better. So things like extra virgin olive oil. And my dad actually asked me this past week, he goes, what's the difference between extra virgin olive oil and virgin olive oil? And my answer was, I have no idea. And that's still the answer that I have for you. Um, so, olive oil, I'm gonna say, go with olive oil, that's a good one. Avocados and avocado oil is also very awesome, very healthy fats. 
Um, throw avocados on, on all kinds of stuff, put it on your salad. Um, avocado oil is very heat stable also, but it's very expensive. So I don't recommend like trying to fry food or anything in, in avocado oil because it will cost you a lot of money. Coconut oil is amazing. Um, that's basically, coconut oil and olive oil are really like the only two oils that we have in our house. The coconut oil we use for everything. I mean, it is, we cook basically everything in it. Uh, I put it in my coffee in the morning. I put it in smoothies to get the, the medium chain uh, triglycerides, those healthy fats that your body can turn into energy very quickly. So if you're going to work out or something in the morning, you know, a, a tablespoon of coconut oil in your coffee or something like that, it's actually gonna help you to burn fat. Um, but it's a great moisturizer. Um, put it on your skin, it's a good sunscreen. I mean, it, it's just incredible. So um, coconut and coconut oil products are fantastic. We wanna definitely have those in the house. And coconut oil is, is pretty heat stable. So if you wanna have some fried chicken for dinner, um, instead of frying it in you know, breadcrumbs and flour and then vegetable oil or canola oil, you could just replace the breading with like uh, coconut flour, which is, which is a good alternative. Um, almond meal, ground up almonds. You can, you can literally take almonds, raw almonds, put it in your blender and get like a flour product from it and then you can make breading out of it. So we usually will do half and half and then season with like garlic and red pepper and sea salt. Um, you dip your chicken in some egg and then you can fry it in coconut oil. And then you put a little sugar free, or not sugar free, but just sugar less hot sauce on there and then you got some good uh, hot wings or, or chicken tenders. Raw nuts are very good sources of, of uh, healthy fats. Um, raw seeds as well. We don't want to have roasted ones because when they're roasted, when they're heated, it actually denatures a lot of the proteins, uh, changes the protein structure in there, um, which can cause allergic reactions and other issues in our bodies. Again, real butter. The, the key with butter is that we want to go organic, all right? If your butter or your milk or your meat or, or your cheese, whatever it is, if it's coming from an animal that's been poorly treated, you know, raised on a conventional farm that's been full of, you know, pesticides and herbicides and vaccinations and, and hormones and antibiotics and all this stuff, all those toxins get into the fats of the animal. Uh, and basically that's what butter is, you know, it's fat from an animal. So you want organic butter, right? The best option is um, grass-fed butter. And here in St. Louis, you can, you can typically find a, a product called Kerrygold. Has anybody ever had that before? It's incredible. And it, that goes really good in your coffee too. Really? Yeah. It's an Irish um, butter, right? It is. It's an Irish butter. It comes from grass-fed cows. What's the name of it? Kerrygold with a K, like K-E-R-R-Y. It's a little bit more expensive than Land O'Lakes, but um, it's not gonna have all the toxins that that stuff does in it either. And this stuff can be bought in the store, or do you have I got mine at Schnucks in Eureka, you know? So that's pretty incredible. If it goes to Eureka, that's, that's awesome. Uh, but a lot of times, right? A lot of times um, you could go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods. Um, Deerberg's in Wildwood right next to my office is amazing. They have tons of healthy products. Um, most Deerbergs do, but they all kind of vary a little bit. But Deerbergs has like those two to three aisles, I think they call them the, the whole life aisles, that have a lot of good healthy stuff in there. Mm -hmm. um, again, with, with our meat, we want to choose like grass fed if it comes <coughs> from cows. Um, if it's chicken or an egg, we want it to be pasture raised versus like, you know, raised in a cage and it never sees the light of day. Um, and then milk, if we're getting good, healthy, organic milk, it's best to get full fat because then we're getting those good healthy fats and basically guys the more healthy fats that we get into our body the more our body's going to start to use those fats as energy versus the sugar so we cut out the sugar for energy and we start fueling ourselves for fat and it basically turns our body from a, a sugar burning machine into a fat burning machine right and i'd rather be a fat burning machine than a sugar burning machine so that's why i even put like like i said the, the butter and the, the coconut oil in my coffee so it's just getting those good fats in there. And they're anti-inflammatory. And you know, almost every disease that you guys look at, every common lifestyle disease that we have right now, even you know, high blood pressure, heart disease, there's always inflammatory components to that stuff. Arthritis, all of those things. So getting those good healthy fats in there are getting uh, deflaming our body as well. What about uh, like soy milk or lactose? That is a great question. I'm glad that you asked that. 
never choose soy. Uh, so you'll see, you'll see a lot of soy that's out there. What I like about Starbucks, like I always kind of like every time I go to Starbucks and I get a latte, I usually will order a breve, so it's like the, the cream, it's like the fattest of the fat, you know, little, yeah, half and half. Uh, but I see people going in, they're ordering like a skinny soy, you know, mocha chocolate or, or whatever it is, <laughs> and it's, it's full of artificial sweeteners, which are toxic, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, and then the soy. So most soy is GMO, all right? Over 90% of the soy that is, that is produced in our, in our country is, or in the world is genetically modified. Um, but it's not just that reason that we want to stay away from it. Soy is also a goitrogen, so it can cause problems with goiters and issues with your thyroid. And it's what's called a xenoestrogen, so it mimics, mimics estrogen in the body. Um, which can, of course, throw off our hormones and especially, you know, lead to things like increased risk of breast cancer and even even breast cancer in men. So that's why we want to not choose soy. If you're lactose intolerant, your best option would be um, almond milk, unsweetened almond milk. You could also do coconut milk. Coconut milk is a little bit thicker. Um, it doesn't have quite the consistency of cow's milk. Um, where you could also do rice milk. But I personally prefer almond milk. What about lactase? Isn't that where they just put in the, the lactose to remove the from the milk? Is that? I am not. I'm not familiar with that. But if it is, um, you mean they put in the enzyme to break down yeah. the lactose? But it is milk, but it yeah. has the enzyme in it. So I'm not super familiar with that. But uh, if it's not organic, I would. I would do it. <coughs> yep. Uh, and then we're also gonna get fats from fish, all right? So everybody's heard of fish oils, omega-3s, huge, you know, you wanna get your cholesterol down, um, you wanna reduce your risk of, of heart disease, which basically one out of two people in our country are dying of that, take, take an omega-3. You definitely want a fish oil, um, or eat four servings of fatty fish a week. And the fatty fish would be <coughs> salmon, um, sardines, or mackerel. Most of us are not eating sardines or, or mackerel, so, um, Take, take your fish oils, that's, that's huge. All right, um, so we want to uh, not cut out fat, right? But we do want to cut out sugar. And you gotta remember that sugar is hidden in so many things. So even if you're not eating candy bars and cookies and ice cream for dessert after dinner, you gotta pay attention to this stuff. Like soft drinks, you can see how much sugar, this, this is from a website called sugarstacks.com. So each one of those is uh, like a teaspoon of sugar, those little cubes, and you can see how much sugar is, is in all these products. So, you, you know, look at all that in soda. The, again, the Starbucks, you know, the Frappuccinos and Cappuccinos and all of that stuff. You can still get those things, but, but don't sweeten them with all their, uh, their sweeteners that they have. Even things like Jamba Juice, um, even milk has a lot of sugar in it. So I was watching um, a movie clip I think the guy's name is Jamie Oliver. Have you guys never heard of him or seen him on TV? And he was talking about how much sugar our kids are getting in school from milk. And in five years, sugar just from milk filled up an entire wheelbarrow, which is absolutely crazy, right? So we gotta, we gotta really pay attention to this stuff. Even graham crackers, you know, which a lot of moms are gonna be giving to their, to their kids because they think it's a good healthy snack. I mean, you read what's in there, it's got basically flour, which turns into sugar right away, and then a whole bunch of other sugar, soybean oil, fructose, which is sugar, you know, just lots of, lots of stuff. Sugar Stacks, sugarstacks.com. So again, there's two things that your body is gonna use for fuel, all right? There's actually three, your body can burn muscle, but that's like last resort, that's like, uh, you know, Tom Hanks on, what's that movie where he gets Cast away. Yeah, so then his body's burning his, his muscle, using it for fuel. We're not going to get to that point, most likely. So um, our body's going to be burning sugar or it's going to be burning fat, okay? So again, we want to not be a sugar burner. We do want to be a fat burner. So that's why we have to increase more, more um, healthy fats and decrease the sugar. Primarily, what's going to change what we burn during exercise is how we exercise, all right? So typical exercise that I'm sure a lot of us have grown up with or you know, gone to the gym and you get on a treadmill, right? You turn it on and you walk for an hour or two hours and you're probably talking to the person next to you. 
you know, maybe not even sweating, right? Because we're, we're not working out very hard on that treadmill. And what happens is that low intensity, moderate um, exercise, basically our body starts to see as a stress, right? And like I said, when our body gets stressed, what it does is it secretes stress hormones like cortisol. And cortisol, what that does to your fat and your body, it makes your body hang on to it, okay? So even if you're doing classic cardiovascular type of exercise, like you're walking on a treadmill or, or walking outside or you know, riding your bike or you know, doing some type of aerobics, um, your body will be burning fat still, but basically when you're done, you're done, right? Like you stop exercising, your body stops burning fat. Um, so we wanna change the way that we exercise. We wanna exercise with intensity. All right? So you don't have to go to the gym and you don't have to work out for an hour or two hours. You need to work out for as little as 12 minutes a day, but very high intensity. All right? <laughs> so there's studies that are not in this presentation that I just went over in, in uh, another presentation that I did last week, talking about two groups of people, one of which uh, did ex an exercise program for eight weeks. Uh, both groups did the exercise program for eight weeks. One, they were checking their heart rate and, and how much their heart was beating during the, during the exercise. One was working out at 60 to 70% of their max heart rate, okay? That group had no significant change in their body fat after eight weeks of working out, starting an exercise program. The group that was working out at 80 to 90% of their max heart rate had a significant fat loss. So it's not about, it's not about how much work you do, it's not how long you exercise or how heavy of weights you do, it's just uh, how intensely you do it. So in our, in our, the way that I'm gonna teach you guys to exercise, it takes you literally 12 minutes to do, and half of that is rest. So you're going for like 20 to 30 seconds, uh, 20 to 30 second surges of fast, high, intense exercise. And that's what's gonna change you from, from fat burning, uh, from sugar burning to fat burning. But the great news about metabolic conditioning is that um, in doing this, you're not just burning fat while you are exercising. You can go home and lay on the couch after you're done exercising and still be burning fat for up to 36 hours because of the hormone response that gets released when you do this high intensity surge training. So you want to be working out, again, at 80 to 90% of your max heart rate, okay? Um, that can be calculated. Some of you may want to write this down. The best way to, to really figure it out is to get a heart rate monitor, like a polar would be a really good one. Um, but you can calculate it yourself if you want to take your pulse or you go to the gym and the, they've got the grips on the cardio machines and it will measure your heart rate. The number 220, subtract your age, multiply it by 0.8, that's 80% and then multiply it by 0.9, that's 90%, that will give you your heart rate range that you wanna be targeting when you're working out for just 20 to 30 seconds at a time. So you may, you may be sprinting you know, for, for 20 to 30 seconds and then you're resting for another 20 to 30 seconds letting your heart rate come back down and then you spike it back up again. So I, this is the kind of exercise we do in the office. Um, every Saturday at eight o'clock in the morning, we do free exercise classes. So you guys are all welcome to come join us um, it's great doing it as a, as a group. We change it up every single time. But I recently, within the last probably four weeks, have for the first time um, started exercising with a heart rate monitor and targeting during my whole workout that 80 to 90%. And what I can tell you is that in about a 30 minute kickboxing workout, that's what I'm currently doing right now, in 30 minutes I'm burning between 500 and 700 calories just by being in that, in that max heart rate zone, which is, which is huge. So uh, again, 12 minutes a day. This is a fantastic resource. So a lot of times people are not gonna exercise because uh, they think it hurts, they think that they don't have time for it, or they think it's too expensive to have a gym membership. What I want you to know is that if exercise hurts you, uh, it's okay to be sore. It's okay to be uncomfortable, all right? If it's causing you pain, you don't want to do it. There's a difference between pain and being a little uncomfortable, all right? Being a little uncomfortable is normal when you're exercising. If it's causing you pain, you know, say you have an old football injury to your knee or your shoulder or something like that, then clearly we don't want to do the exercises that are exacerbating those. 
So in this DVD that we use with our patients, every one of our patients that starts care in our office gets this program. There's two, two DVDs, and there's 12 different workouts on it. And for every workout, each one of the 12, there's three instructors. So the first instructor teaches you like a very basic, simple movement. So if it's a jumping movement and you can't jump because you've got bad knees, you step. You know, uh, if, if it's a push-up and you can't do a push-up on the floor, they teach you how to do a push-up on the wall. You know, so, so we literally have people in their 80s and 90s that are doing the workouts with people that are in, you know, their 20s and playing college sports, and they're doing the exact same workout, but just in a different variation. So there's beginner, advanced, and intermediate. Um, each workout takes you seriously 12 minutes to do. Uh, which is incredible. It's best and most effective if you do it first thing in the morning. That's where you're going to get the biggest hormone response. Um, and it's 35 bucks, which is like, you know, one month of a cheap gym membership. Um, and actually, it says 15% off tonight. We just had two fitness challenges that we launched last week in the office, and we sold out of tons of inventory of stuff. So I actually only have one tonight. Uh, but we're going to give it to you if anybody wants it for 20% off instead of 15 And if anybody wants to order that, uh, we already have some on order. We will deliver them to here, um, or if you want us to, to order one and ship one to your house, we'll do that uh, if, you, if you do it tonight, if you want it. And I think, Karen, do you guys still have one here in the office? I don't, I don't have it, but we do. We, we bought the books and we bought the tape. Yeah, something, it's in our library somewhere, but awesome. I don't have it. So somewhere around here, there's one too. So, um, you know, if you rip it on your computer or something like that, just don't tell me about it. <laughs> um, so toxins is the other thing that, that we need to talk about here. So leptin, remember, that's the hormone that gets secreted from our fat cells that's telling our body to burn fat. So we don't, it's not good to have more leptin because what happens, we have more signals saying burn fat, burn fat, burn fat, that causes more burnout. That causes the brain to ignore it and, and, and be burnt out. We have leptin resistance, so now our body is weight loss resistant. What happens is that toxins have, some of you may know this, toxins have an affinity for fat cells in our body. So when we have toxins that are coming from our makeup or our water, like chlorine or fluoride in our water, or air fresheners, or toxins from our clothes, from our, uh, our laundry detergent, are those chemical toxins that are in our food all that stuff has an affinity for fat cells so it goes into your fat cells and when toxins bind to our fat cells it causes fat cells to release more leptin so it's really really important that we get that we get rid of toxins during this as well because if, if we're still very toxic our body's not going to burn fat um, again fat cells go to our toxins go to the fat cells and the fat cell kind of surrounds the toxin to buffer us to protect our bodies from the toxins so if our body is even in a fat burning state, but we're toxic, our body's not going to burn those fat cells that are protecting us from the toxins. So we need to get rid of toxins. Looking at proteins and meats, um, you gotta understand that most of these things are toxic, okay? So an animal has to eat about 16 pounds of plant material to get one pound of flesh, all right? So if we get a one, one pound of ground beef at the grocery store, that's like 16 pounds of plant material that that cow had to eat. And you can imagine, I know you know we're in, in the Midwest here, you guys see the, the farmers spraying the fields, the crop dusting, all those pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers, fungicides, all of those toxic chemicals that sometimes the farmers and the, the truck drivers when they're delivering have to wear hazmat suits because they're so toxic, are going on to the food that's being fed to the animals that we are buying at the grocery store. Okay, so, so you have to make sure that, that you understand that and realize that we, we have to choose, especially when it's um, proteins or animal products, that it's coming from organic, um, especially if we can, the best would be grass-fed cows. Protein is essential, okay? So there's a lot of good benefits to protein besides just um, you know helping our body to build lean muscle. Protein is the building block for every cellular structure in our body. And there are amino acids and proteins that actually our body creates uh, antioxidants from, all right? So our protein, the great thing about it is that it comes from all naturally raised, organic, grass-fed cows, all right? So none of those toxins on the, on the food that it's eating. There's no sugar in ours, and there's no toxic artificial sweeteners in ours either. So if you go to GNC, 
or supplement superstore, you buy your, your protein shakes from, from Walmart, um, just read, again, read the label, read the ingredients. You're going to see all kinds of artificial sweeteners and you know probably a lot of times actual sugar as well. So ours have none of that. There's no artificial anything in there. Um, and it's actually, it's still sweet. It tastes incredible. It's sweetened with stevia. So again, we do have, I brought a few of these because you'll notice in this, in this packet that Amanda printed off for you guys, there's actually recipes in here. So it will tell you every day what to eat. So if you need help with this, this is really makes it a no brainer. And a lot of the smoothies that are in here for breakfast use protein. So that's like really the best protein that you can get. So we have, we don't have a ton of it, but we have a couple that I brought. If anybody wants them, they're yours. And again, um, we're doing everything for 20% off tonight if you guys want to try it out. So that's, that's what we tend to have most mornings, um, you know, besides some eggs and stuff would be a smoothie. Same, did you bring detox too? So we, we also have some detox. So again, if you guys want this stuff, this is what we use in our office. This is what we use with all of our patients. So Jack Matt, the guy that you know lowered his cholesterol, triglycerides, uh, Chris, the lady that just won our last stuff. These are the same things that they use to help them get there. Um, and again, we have to pull toxins out of the body if our body's gonna burn the fat efficiently. So this is one that I take almost every single day. Um, there's two pieces to it. One of them is called cell detox. So that's one set of pills. Uh, the other one is called body detox. So the cell detox basically is a bunch of amino acids, antioxidants, um, and herbal support for your liver that helps your liver to create more glutathione, which is like this super cellular detoxing antioxidant that your body already makes. And then once we get those toxins out of the cells, you gotta realize that they're still kind of floating around in our body. So the other piece is the cell or the body detox, and that actually has activated charcoal in it, which is incredible because if somebody like OD'd on a bottle of pills and you take them to, to the hospital or you know, a little kid drinks a cleaner from under the seat, sink and you call poison control, what they're gonna do is they're gonna put activated charcoal in the body because it just soaks up all the toxins. And it actually does such an incredible job of this that you can't take the body detox at the same time as you would take medication. So if you're on like you know, blood pressure medication or, or statin drugs or something like that, this stuff works so good it would soak all that stuff up and it would become ineffective so you would have to take it at a, at a different time so uh, we're gonna stick around I've, I've got a couple more minutes that we're gonna that we're gonna talk but I will stick around at the end and if anybody does if you're serious about this I guarantee you if you if you put your foot for it you give it the effort maybe you may not lose 20 pounds some of you I wouldn't be surprised if you lose more but I guarantee every single person is going to be radically different within 30 days if you but the, the biggest question is, do you just want to be skinnier? Do you just want to be lighter, or do you actually want to be healthier? Because just because you're skinny, right, or just because you're not obese doesn't mean that you are healthy, okay? I, I want everybody to know that, because there's plenty of people that are skinny and have heart disease, and skinny and have breast cancer, and all these other things. So you have to, if, if the ultimate goal is really to be healthy, you have to know what health truly is. And most people in our country and in our society, they think that healthy is what? They think that it's being skinny, or what else? How else would somebody else know if they were healthy or not? What do you think? How about how you feel? Does anybody think that? A lot of times people will think, well, I don't feel bad, so I must be fine. I must be healthy, right? Who knows what our top two killers in the country are disease-wise? Heart disease and what's the other one? Strokes. Strokes kind of dealing with the cardiovascular heart disease. Cancer. cancer. Mm -hmm. Heart disease and cancer. How do you know when you have them? We didn't have them. Right. So you don't you don't feel it, right? Just like you don't feel high blood pressure, you don't feel um, high cholesterol, right? You don't feel cancer cells growing in your body. So so feeling really has nothing to do with our health. So feeling good does not equal good health. What does equal good health is good function, okay? So if you look at even the World Health Organization, the way that they define health is that it's the optimal functioning of our body in these different dimensions, mentally, physically, socially, spiritually, but this is the key part, is that it's not just the absence of symptoms or disease. So just because we feel fine does not mean that we're healthy. 
So what health truly is about is about how well our body functions. If we are functioning at 100%, we're gonna be healthy, right? Your body was created to heal. So if you fall and you break your leg right now in six weeks, you don't have to take any medication, that's gonna heal, right? If I were to cut your finger right now, two weeks, there's no medication, even if you don't put a Band-Aid or Neosporin on it, right, it's going to heal. So you are created to heal. You're created to adapt to your environment, right? So if, if we lock the doors and set the room on fire right now, what would happen to your blood pressure, do you think? It's gonna go through the roof, right? Not because you have bad genetics, right? Um, not because you're overweight, but because that's an adaptation. We need, we need that to happen. And what's controlling how our body adapts and how it functions and how we heal, there's one organ in the body that controls all of that. What do you think the most important organ in your body is? Boom, right? It's your brain, right? Has anybody ever, has it, has anybody been wondering like why I'm a chiropractor talking about all this stuff? This, this is the key here, okay? It's because your brain, right? Your brain and your nervous system. So we know that there's all of this amazing power that is in our brain that's making our heart beat right now it's making you understand what I'm saying, helping you to digest your food. Every single thing that's happening in your body, every breath that you're taking is being coordinated by your brain and your nervous system, right? So this power that is in your brain has to get through to these organs for them to work right and function and heal, right? If I were to cut your spinal cord in half right here and those signals couldn't effectively get through, what would happen to all the organs in the rest of the body? It would shut down, right? How many of you remember who Christopher Reeves is? But so most of you remember him, you know what happened. He fell off a horse playing polo, he broke his neck. And the part of his neck that he broke was this top bone right here that protects his brain stem that's called the atlas, or the C1 vertebra. And a, a fragment of that fracture shifted into the back of his brain stem one centimeter. One centimeter worth of damage to that area of the nervous system and what happened to him immediately. Paralyzed, right? His arms and his legs didn't work because that power couldn't get through. And even though he had, you know, the best doctors, they could have put him on the best detox, they could have put him on the best exercise program, given him all organic food and supplements, right? None of that would have helped him live any longer because the power wasn't getting through. Does that does that make sense? So you can you can literally go a whole month without eating food at all and still survive. You can go a whole week without drinking fluids or water and still survive. You can even go you know, minutes without air, without oxygen, and still survive, but if that power's not getting through the nervous system to the organs and muscles, you're not, you're not surviving. So usually, we don't meet patients like Christopher Reeves, who come in and have had a broken neck or, or actually a severed part of the spinal cord or nerves, but we do have a lot of patients that come in who have desk jobs. And that's probably the biggest one because when people sit at a desk all day long, especially if, you're, if your computer height's not set up right, uh, you're, you're, at the end of the day, you're, you're like this, right? So your head's all shifted toward, and those bones and those vertebrae in your spine, they start to shift into an abnormal position, which is called subluxation. So if those bones shift out of alignment, and now they're putting pressure, or they're putting tension on the nerves that are coming out of the spine instead of cutting it, right? The signals still may be getting through, they're just not getting through properly, right? Like the water's not on full force, or the, the like a dimmer switch, right? Like it's still, there's still power going through, but the, the lights aren't bright. So if those nerves are going to organs, are those organs gonna work better or worse if those signals aren't getting through properly? Worse, exactly, right? So then you end up having symptoms, right? Then you end up having digestive problems, or you end up having headaches, but instead of going and getting the, your spine checked, what do we do? We go take an ibuprofen, right? Or we take a Tums, right? And is any ibuprofen or any Tums ever, do you think, going to move those bones in there? No, it, it's impossible. And a lot of us, what we'll do is we'll actually not do either of those things and we'll just ignore it, right? We just kind of get used to it, we just kind of live with it, and life just kind of sucks a little bit, but sooner or later we're, we're just used to that, right? That becomes our new normal. Well, if there's a problem in your body you know, something that's actually physically out of alignment, if you didn't fix that and you just kept on living your life, what do you think would happen to that problem a week or a month or a year down the road? Worse, right? So that's why it's so much harder as a chiropractor to fix, you know, adults than it is little kids. I love, you know, I love adjusting kids. It's incredible. Like when I adjust babies, I can literally like use this much force that I can put on my own eyeball 
and it's that easy to adjust them and get them back into alignment. Whereas some adults, like I have to pull out a sledgehammer, <laughs> and actually, I'm joking, but I, you know, it takes a lot of force to, uh, to be able to do that. So how many of you are familiar with chiropractic care? Okay, awesome, that's fantastic. How many of you get adjusted on a regular basis? Okay, so not, not nearly as many hands go up there, uh, which is definitely an issue. Uh, so here, here's the good news, okay? Not looking about the things that you wanna get rid of when you go to the doctor, but the things that you actually want. This is a study done from a medical journal called JMPT that was looking at chiropractic wellness patients. So these are the patients that don't have anything wrong with them. There's no symptom. And what we found out is that over, over the course of five years of doing wellness or just maintenance type of adjustments, they only spent a third of the national average on healthcare costs of what people who did it were spending. Um, they went to their doctor 50% less than the people who weren't getting adjusted. They had 60% less hospital admission. And this is, this is the killer one right here, is that they saved 85% of their pharmaceutical costs, 85%. So Fidelity Bank recently did a study talking about the cost of our prescriptions, okay? So in retirement, guess how much the average American person spends on prescription medication? A quarter of a million dollars, $225,000. And if you live a little bit longer than they expect you to live, that number just goes up, right? So you may be alive, you may be in a nursing home, which is gonna cost you another six to seven grand a month, right? Um, but you're gonna be broke and you're gonna be miserable. So that is what's really cool. Uh, this guy, chiropractic patient, I don't wanna talk for too much longer, so I'm gonna kinda of bust through some of these. Anyway, his name's Brian. He had a big issue with weight loss. You can see he lost over 100 pounds, which was incredible. But he had tried Jenny Craig, he had tried Weight Watchers, he tried all these different things, he never lost any weight. He started getting adjusted, and then all of a sudden he started doing these other programs that we're talking about with nutrition and exercise, and he loses 100 pounds. So what's the difference? When you look at the x-ray of his neck, it was completely straight, right? So those bones were shifted out of alignment. There are bones that are putting pressure on the nerves that were going to his thyroid, and his thyroid is controlling his metabolism, so his thyroid was never working right, so he has weight loss resistance. He actually came to a maximized living doctor and, and got adjusted and did spinal correction instead of just getting popped or cracked and feel better. And you can see his after one, and those nerves that were being pinched that were going to his thyroid, they didn't have the pressure on him anymore, and then his thyroid started working right again, and then he was able to lose weight. So how would, how would you know if you needed to be checked, have your spine checked, or if you needed to be adjusted? If you had a backache. Huh? If you had a backache. <laughs> if you have a backache, that is like a, a flashing warning sign going off saying, you need to be checked. That's that's the check engine soon light in your car, right? right. So if, if you ignore that check engine soon light, then I know some of you are probably guilty of that too, but if you ignore it and there's a problem with your car, you're gonna break down, right? You don't, you don't want that to happen. So it's really valuable that we can have things like, you know, even irritable bowel sy syndrome uh, or digestive problems or constipation and know that there's something wrong with us before we end up with colon cancer and they're trying to cut out you know, a foot of our colon, right? It's really valuable that we know that we have uh, high blood pressure, we have high cholesterol before we're dying of a, of a heart attack, right? So the thing is, is that when we have these warning signs, you have to do something about them. And most of us, what we do is we just cover them up with medication, right? And we think that that's gonna make us healthier, but you can take that medication for the rest of your life and stop taking it one day, and guess what problem is still right there? The, the high blood pressure, the high cholesterol. So if you don't fix the cause of it and you just cover it up, that problem is still gonna be with you. So if you've got headaches, a lot of times it's because the nerves in the back of your head right here at the base of your skull, those nerves that are controlling blood supply to your brain are probably being pinched because your head's probably shifted forward like this and then kinked back like that. Okay, so if those nerves are pinched, it's gonna cause headaches. Um, you know, if you have acid reflux because the nerves in your, in your mid back that are going to your digestive system are being crunched, and all you do is you take Nexium or you take Tums or something like that, that's not gonna fix that. And actually what it does is it stops your body from producing more acid. So as soon as you stop taking that, your body checks back in with the brain. The brain says, oh my gosh, we don't have enough stomach acid. So guess what it does? It makes a whole lot more stomach acid, right? So you, you, you just can't trick your body and, and, and make it worse. 
If there's numbness or tingling anywhere in your arms, your wrists, or your legs, that is, that is a red flag because that means numbness, tingling, uh, burning are typically signs of nerve damage. All right? That's why diabetics, a lot of times, when they have that nerve damage in their feet, they have the numbness and the tingling. So if, that, if any of those things are going on, that's basically your body telling you you need to get it back. <coughs> For those of you who have been to a chiropractor before, okay, because I know there's a lot of different kinds of chiropractors, um, it's important to understand what we do different. Number one is that we're spinal correction. So how many of you that have been to a chiropractor before actually had an x-ray when you went in? Okay, so almost all the hands went up when I said who had been to a chiropractor. Only three of you have actually had an x-ray. So how does the doctor know if he's fixing you or not? Right? And then some of you who have actually been and had an x-ray when you started, how many of you had an x-ray at the end to know if, if the problem was actually fixed or not? Most of you not, right? Maybe, hopefully, hopefully some of you have. But that's the difference with spinal correction. We don't just look for you feeling better. We want objective results. We want to see your spine actually being corrected. So that's what we do in the office. So every patient gets x-rays in our office. I, I would never treat anybody until I know what's going on with their spine, right? Because I don't just want to treat their symptoms. I want to fix their problems. So a typical exam and appointment in our office uh, costs $135. And that includes your x-rays. It includes digital scans that we do on a computer. Um, it includes your consultation, your health history, the whole ball of wax. What we do um, for our corporate wellness partners is we cut out $100 of that. So if anybody wants to come in and get checked, if you haven't been checked before, you're having some of those warning signs, Elena can actually, she has already blocked certain times in our schedule over the next couple of weeks where you can come in and if you want to sign up to get checked, $35, so without a doubt, if, if any of your problems are being caused from nerve damage or damage your spine. So if you want to do that, Elena can help you with that. Uh, just a couple quick pointers here about the 20 and 30 challenge. Uh, this is incredible because it's got basically your baseline stuff. It tells you your BMI index. We will take measurements of you tonight in about five minutes for any of you that want to start. Uh, we'll, we'll measure your weight, your body fat percentage. We'll take some measurements. It has mindset tips. Uh, it's got recipes in there. All the recipes that are in here, um, or all the, the meals that are in here, the recipes are actually in our nutrition plan book that looks like that. And there is one here. Uh, again, you can make photocopies if you want. Don't tell me about it. Uh, or if you want to buy them, um, it's an incredible resource. It's got over 100 recipes in it. We'll do it for 20% off tonight as well. And then the challenge for you guys that are committed, I want it to start Monday, okay? So Monday, that's going to give us basically the whole month of June. If we start Monday, June 2nd, we end June 30th. There's a grocery shopping tour one week. There's a recipe night one week. And we have weekly workouts at our, at our uh, office every Saturday. And if somebody wants to lead workouts here on a weekly basis, that would actually be pretty incredible as well. Keep in touch with us. Uh, let us know if you want to do it. We have a Facebook page set up where we will post pictures of meals, we'll post um, you know, tips, we'll post exercises, uh, we'll post recipes, all that kind of stuff. So check us out on Facebook. If you go to Maximize Living on Facebook, there's a lot of free downloads on there. Uh, our website is right on here, which I think is on some of the paperwork. 212degreesofwellness.com.